All right. Figure that out. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone here this morning. We've got some folks that have been out a little bit. Back again. Good to see you. <coughs> few announcements, uh, reminders of some folks that we want to continue to remember in our prayers. And uh, I know that Sid has been, uh, but he's already started. Oh, there he is. Sid's with us this morning. He snuck in the back door. But uh, good, good to see you this morning. Yeah, came in by yourself. So that's good. And uh, we want to also remember others. I was talking to, uh, to Ron, and he... Uh, had a doctor's visit this, this past week, trying to get things squared away with the machine and machinery and everything that he needs for the oxygen generation, and uh, still not solved. But uh, uh, he does appreciate all of us. Got a good advocate, advocate. A good advocate absolutely. Uh, Miranda's going to help him out with that, so straighten him out. Uh, but it uh, and Roy, uh, Roy's doing good. Uh, last visit he had was uh, I think week four last with the doctor, and, and so he's on like a every month basis now so he's doing great I want to continue to remember uh, him uh, Miranda also uh, Angie's not with us this morning um, I want to continue to remember her as well and uh, for, for Robert as he's continuing and recovering his strength as well uh, and uh, others that don't have any uh, new updates do want to continue to remember Michael Scoggins he's one of the members over at, uh, at Commerce and uh, he is uh, waiting for a heart transplant. So uh, we want to continue to remember Michael and his family. He's a young man, and uh, that's pretty tough to be young and waiting for a heart transplant. So let's remember all these in our prayers. Anytime you have any updates that we need to be made aware of, please let us know, and uh, we'll share that with the church. A reminder for our gospel meeting that's coming up April 24th, through the 28th, and uh, Gary will be with us, Gary Jones, uh, with the Lord's blessings. He'll be with us presenting these lessons that have been present, uh, scheduled here, and there are copies. If, are there still copies? It is, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, the House to House, Heart to Heart, uh, we do have some, some extra copies of that, but that has gone out to uh, all of the areas that you saw we presented to you where it's being spread to. So uh, we want to make plans. You know, it's one thing to invite others. It's another thing to be here. And it's an embarrassing thing to invite others and you not be here. So invite others and be here. So that'd be good. Uh, some upcoming events. Uh, some of this is on the board, uh, bulletin board back there. The Ladies' Day at, at the Seneca Church is uh, April 23rd. And... Uh, I think they had requested a uh, RSVP. Any of the ladies that are planning to do that, that you can do that online, uh, but they will be doing that in, uh, live in Seneca as well. And I know that some some of you have have attended that before, and it's very good. So we encourage you to be part of that. Uh, and uh, there's information about that, uh, 8:30 to 12, and uh, lunch to follow. Of course, if you're online. Lunch is on your own. So, <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, uh, Family and Youth Day uh, at the Don Carter State Park. It's in Gainesville, and this is being sponsored by the Habersham Congregation and uh, Harmony Grove. So, uh, uh, that'll be the uh, April the 30th. That'll be the Saturday following our gospel meeting. So, uh, and there's. I've seen the email. Is there is there a thing on the board for that too, for more information? Yeah. Uh, there's not. It's just on their. Okay. We have it on our Facebook page. Okay, it's on our Facebook page. So for more information, it'll be 11 to 3 uh, at the Don Carter State Park on April 30th. <clears throat> As always, we want to remember to uh, pray for our leaders and those that are uh, leading our country, uh, leading our state, leading our local communities uh, and uh, we, we know that the Lord has all authority and uh, we pray <coughs> primarily for our own benefit <coughs> that we might lead a quiet and peaceful life 
uh, godly and dignified in every way, as uh, Paul encouraged Timothy. And uh, so um, let us be praying for our leaders um, and the problems that are going on around the world, in Ukraine, Afghanistan, even in our own country. So, um, the church in Ukraine, I know that there are uh, uh, some that are trying to help them there. I think I had heard that there's like 30 or 40 congregations there, and they range from relatively small to about 300. So uh, there are Christians there, our brethren, that we want to pray for, for their deliverance and for their safe, safekeeping. And as always, in, in times of trial like this, persecutions is an opportunity to share the good news, even as we read in, in Acts. And uh, so let's, uh, let's pray for our brethren in these challenging areas as well. And as always, we want to remember those that we're supporting in Costa Rica and in India and in uh, uh, Kenya as well. Uh, we, we have some, some folks that we know and love uh, working in these areas, and we want to pray for them for their uh, continued good work and their efforts. So just a reminder uh, of all that they're, the challenges that they're facing as well. Today, uh, after our assembly this morning, we'll have dinner today, and there's always uh, already a lot of good food showing up over there. And uh, so I encourage everyone to stay for that, participate in that. Uh, we'll have singing here immediately following that. I encourage everyone to stay for that. You can stay for the food. You can stay around a little longer for the singing. Uh, and uh, so it, it's a... Larry always looks forward to the first Sunday. <laughs> so, he, always, he always asks me, if you're going to eat Sunday? And I, it doesn't matter what Sunday it is, I'm going to eat it. So. That, that's guaranteed. Um, just a reminder, too, of our uh, opportunities that we have to assemble here, 9 o'clock for our Bible study each Sunday morning, 10 o'clock for our worship assembly as we are here. And, and uh, other than the first, day, first Sunday of the month, we'll meet at 5 o'clock on Sunday. And then on Wednesday night, every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. And we have uh, uh, classes for everybody, so I encourage everybody to be here. <clears throat> Our first song this morning uh, is uh, number 256, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. <clears throat> As uh, Paul was, uh, actually this is in, in Acts chapter 4, this is Peter who was speaking to the, to the council. And he said to them, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, and by him this man is standing here before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And John echoed the, the same idea in uh, 1 John chapter 5. says, and, and this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life, and whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Truly, uh, uh, these words are encouraging us as we remember that our life is in Christ. And apart from Him, as John says, we don't have life. And so, uh, as we sing the words of this song and uh, encouraging ourselves, encouraging one another, and, and honoring God, uh, let us think about these things from our hearts as we worship together. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away his fear. And drives away his fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. Tis manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest and to the weary rest. Weak is the effort of my heart and cold my warmest thought. But when I see 
for our contribution this morning. Went to a restaurant the other day uh, for lunch and actually that was on, turned off here. Um, had uh, one of the I guess the best waitress I've had in a long time there. Uh, but she was just very polite and, and just very accommodating. And I, I noticed that she went around checking on everybody that uh, as she was giving out people's tickets, she was uh, putting a Bible verse on everybody's uh, on everybody's uh, receipt or uh, ticket. Not only was she putting the Bible verse on it, she wasn't just making them up. She knew what every one of them was, and everybody got a different one. Um, which kind of brings me to this. Uh, so, so what she put on mine, was Romans 12 12 and I said I know Romans 12 too but I don't know Romans 12 12 and she kind of thumped me on the head and said you'll figure it out so <laughs> let, let me share with you what, what uh, and I'm going to start in verse 9 but it says let love be genuine it says abhor what is evil hold fast to what is good love one another with brotherly affection outdo one another in showing honor do not be slothful in zeal be fervent in spirit serve the Lord Verse 12 says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. Going on with verse 13, it says, Contribute to the needs of the saints, seek to show hospitality. Um, I noticed as I was reading that, that uh, some of your, the newer translations of the newer Bible verse, or Bibles have subheadings, and the subheading in this uh, particular uh, translation I was reading says, The mark of a true Christian. Um, but one of the things that, that, that the scripture says is that we're supposed to minister to the needs of the saints. Um, and that's what we have the opportunity to do here this morning, uh, is to be able to, to share the blessings that God has given with us, with those around us. So let's go to God in prayer. Our God and Father in heaven, we want to thank you and, and for all the many blessings that you give us in this life. We thank you for the opportunity that we have here this morning to be able to come here and to be able to worship you and praise you and give you all the honor and glory that you deserve, Father. Father, if we take up this collection, I pray that you would uh, be with each one of us this morning, that if we seek our hearts um, to be able to give according to the way we've proffered, Father, the way that you have blessed us, Lord. I pray that as we, uh, not only as we give here this morning, Father, but that you would uh, just show us each and every day, Father, how we can use the blessings that you give us in this life to help all those around us, Father. As always, Father, we want to pray that uh, that your will be done with everything that, that we have in this life. and that your will be done uh, here this morning with, with, with this contribution. Thank you so much for all that you give us, and we ask and pray these things to your Son and our Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Next song is number 70, 70, Be Thou My Vision. <laughs> this uh, aspect of, of, of prayer is just uh, essentially a prayer to the Lord to 
Help us to see what we need to see. Guide us with wisdom to uh, uh, to be spiritual and appropriate in our praise and honor to God. Uh, following the Lord in all things, for truly the Lord is great and worthy of our praise. In Daniel chapter 2, Daniel recorded, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. To you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise. As we sing the words of this song, let that be uh, our thoughts from our hearts as well, to give thanks and praise. And after, after we sing this song, then Ron is going to lead us in prayer. <coughs> too late 
and have been assembled with those that are your people. We're so thankful to be a part of this congregation, Father, a group of imperfect people serving a perfect Savior and God. And we thank you, Father, for your grace that covers us throughout each day. Father, we're so thankful that we can be here in peace. There's so much turmoil in the world today, both political and physical, and we thank you and praise you that you've been spared up to this point with no uh, molestation of any kind. Father, we're thankful that we're as well as we are. Some of us here have health problems, and we pray, Father, that we can continue to be here uh, under our own strength for as long as possible to worship you. Father, we pray for Gary as he <coughs> delivers the word to us this morning. We appreciate his efforts, and we know that they are not gone unnoticed, and we hope and pray that he has a long life in your service, that those present could listen with their minds open and understand and learn from the word. We're thankful that we were able this morning to give as our means, that we've been able to work or plan or whatever the case may be, to set a portion aside for the further the gospel and for helping those worthy wherever we have opportunity. That does not excuse us from doing these things in our own, Father. We need to remind, remember that we need to do good whenever we have opportunity in accordance with your holy will. As we're about to continue through this worship service, Father, we pray that we do things in accordance with what you want, that we can be reverent, that we can be attentive, that we can be humble and focus on you, the true and the living God. From time to time, Father, we do and say things that we shouldn't, and we fail to do and say things that we should. But we pray, Father, that you would forgive us as we ask for forgiveness, and that we, in our feeble human minds, could understand that forgiveness comes from not repeating the same things over and over. And we go through this again, Father. Let us be attentive to the word, and we praise you, and thank you, and honor you in, a, in this uh, assembly this morning. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we take the Lord's Supper together, we'll sing number 644, Tis Set the Feast Divine. <clears throat> it's truly a great blessing that we've been given to be able to partake of this memorial each first day of the week. And uh, each time we have this opportunity and each time we, we think about it, uh, there is just so much more uh, that we find that it means to us to be able to remember our Savior's sacrifice in this way. In uh, Paul's writing to the church in Corinth, he said, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup went away. I'll let you know that. Sorry. Please stand up. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we're looking and awaiting his return. But let us also remember how it is that we got in Christ. 
and it is only through his sacrifice that it's possible for us. unfold before their very eyes. They're like, oh, he, he meets this one, or oh, he, he, he's got this one too. Um, and, and they're seeing all these things, and, and they realized who he was um, and what he was, uh, and yet they they still play. Uh, on, you know, they all sat down with him on, you know, with the Lord's Supper, or at the Last Supper, as we call it, in that upper room, and they were all so eager to follow him, but yet when he went to the cross, he was, he was all by himself. I mean, they had, to, they had to find a stranger to help him carry his own cross um, because these 12 closest men to him, or the 11 at that point, but they all knew who he was. They all loved him. They all followed him, but yet they were all scared um, because they didn't know what was happening. They still didn't understand. But one of the, uh, the, the prophecies that always come to mind that always kind of stuck with me was in Jeremiah when it says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one his neighbor teach his neighbor and each his neighbor, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. And I will forgive their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. As we partake of this, uh, these two emblems, the, the cup and the fruit of the vine, let's remember um, that the sacrifice that it represents, let's remember the life that, it, that, that Christ lived, and let's do the best that we can to follow the Lord each and every day uh, and not be uh, like the disciples. You know, there's, there's going to be times in our life when we're scared and we run away. Uh, but we need to remember, uh, as it, it says in the front of this table, that we do so in remembrance of the Lord. Remember Christ Jesus. Remember that, that he, uh, as the song sings, he could have called 10,000 angels uh, to save him, but yet he went ahead and he did it anyway. Uh, didn't want to do it. I mean, that's... To me, uh, as as Christ is in the garden praying, you know, uh, fervently, Lord, if it be your will, let this cap, this cup pass before me. That can't put Christ's humanity, which this bread represents, any closer to me, because I can imagine the fear and the, the anguish that he must have felt at that time. But yet he did it for us anyway. So let's remember that life and that anguish that he went through for the remission of our sins. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we think of this prayer up to your son by that was beaten and put on the cruel cross for the mission of our sins. Let those who take this bread and do it, please, a man in the least. 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Continue our prayer. God and Father, we come before you once again to thank you for this fruit of the vine and, and for the blood that it represents, Father. Lord, be with each one of us this morning as we partake of this cup, that we remember the sacrifice that was made on our behalf, that we remember the blood that was shed and the, the anguish that our, our Lord and Savior went through for the remission of our sins, Father. Be with each one of us this morning as we partake of this cup, Father, that we do so in the truth and in the spirit and in remembrance of your Son and our Savior, Christ Jesus. And it's through his name that we pray. Amen. Before the lesson, we'll sing number 710, 710 in our song books. To us, a child of hope is born. As you may have noticed in the uh, uh, bulletin, <clears throat> the title of Gary's lesson is A Closer Look at the Birth of Jesus. And uh, that'll be a very good study for us this morning. This song reminds us of some of the uh, particulars concerning that especially from the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9. <clears throat> For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, 
everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end on the throne on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. A, f a very firm and great promise that has been recognized uh, in the new kingdom of which we are a part. And uh, it is great that uh, we are able to honor our Savior uh, as we think about these things in this way. If it's convenient for you, would you stand with me while we sing together, please? To us a child of hope is born, to us a son is given. Him shall the tribes of earth obey, him all the hosts of heaven. Him shall the tribes of earth obey, him all the host of heaven. His name shall be the Prince of Peace forever. shall guard his throne above and peace abound below. Justice shall guard his throne above and peace abound below. Please be seated. If you'd like to mark uh, number 380-380 just as I am, we'll sing uh, that song after Gary's lesson this morning. So before we uh, begin the lesson uh, this morning, I did have I had a really good day yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I was able to uh, to meet with uh, my niece, uh, my older brother Joe Lee, his uh, his daughter Katie, and uh, she's been uh, uh, studying for um, for a long time and uh, wanting to be able to uh, make the right decision. And uh, so we, uh, we talked for a few hours yesterday afternoon, and uh, last night uh, she obeyed the gospel. And so uh, we were there at the, uh, the church uh, building there in Harmony Grove, uh, since that was a local, localer. And uh, uh, so that was, that was a, a great, great night, uh, and, and just prayers were absolutely answered. And of course, now my mom was very excited. Of course, she wanted to be in the picture as well. You can see her finger in the uh, top uh, left corner, uh, so, so you know, she could be a part of this as well. But uh, just, uh, of course, asking for prayers uh, as she uh, starts this journey. And uh, she she has some uh, some pretty strong support on uh, one side of her family, and um, less support. Uh, significantly on the other side of her family and so uh, just uh, uh, keep her in your prayers uh, it, it's uh, she is going to be a uh, hopefully a, a great example for her for her children her husband and and the rest of the family and hopefully we'll be able to continue the study and also be able to bring in uh, the rest of her family to that but now on to the lesson so as uh, you may have noticed, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, plants are turning green and our cars are turning yellow. It's uh, springtime. And of course, anytime somebody says springtime, uh, I, you know, I, I, I go back to Mayberry and that song pops in my head that you see the line from. So if anybody's been to Mayberry, uh, that, that song, you may recognize that high-pitched uh, song there. 
But, uh, of course, this time of year, uh, people want to talk about Jesus. So what a great time to talk about uh, the birth of Jesus. And uh, this is a, uh, a common scene that uh, you might have seen around on uh, Christmas cards and uh, maybe plays. And, and, uh, but you've got, uh, there, there you have the, the baby Jesus in, in the barn. And, uh, you know, nice bright star and got some wise guys, or wise men and uh, shepherds and uh, a couple of people. I don't, I don't know who they are, but uh, they probably just stopped by, you know, neighbors of the barn. And uh, everybody all there together to, to be able to see Jesus, uh, you know, on the night that he was born. I have uh, asked uh, questions before and... Um, you know, done a little quiz uh, to look at uh, what we know about the birth of Jesus and maybe what people think they know about the birth of Jesus. And so I just thought I would, uh, I would ask again, uh, let's see how you do this time. Of course, you, you see there, hey, don't answer out loud. So uh, just uh, write the answer down in your brain, and at the end of the lesson you'll turn your brain in and we'll grade it. Okay, or no, just we're going to go over and, and see kind of what, uh, what the answers might be. So first one is, again, these are all true-false. Uh, the Bible says the angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph to inform him that Mary was with child. Uh, so I'll, I'll, we won't spend a whole lot of time and, and thought on these. I'll just, we'll throw them out there and you can, you can answer. Uh, the Bible says that three wise men came to the manger to worship and give gifts to Jesus. So there's, a, again, true or false. The Bible says that an unknown number of wise men came to the manger to worship Jesus. The Bible says that there were multiple animals in the stable where Jesus was born. The Bible says that a bright star appeared in the sky and led the wise men to the manger. Uh, the Bible says that a host of heavenly angels sang to the shepherds, on the night of, of Jesus' birth. And finally, uh, the Bible says that an innkeeper told Mary and Joseph that there was no room in the inn. So, I'll let you ponder over those for a second. And Okay, a second's up. Uh, how do you think you did? Anybody think they got them all right? Again, don't answer that. I'm just going to ask you. All right. uh, if you answered uh, any of the questions with a true, then uh, you got that one wrong. Uh, every statement is false uh, for one reason or another. My encouragement is, uh, hey, go back and read. And, uh, of course, uh, these questions will, uh, again, be online later on for you to look at again. Or if you really want them, I'll, I'll give them to you. Uh, but if, again, go back and, and dig into the scriptures and uh, check it out yourself. So why ask questions like that? Uh, again, it's not a um, gotcha lesson, or it's not to embarrass you, not to point out and say, <laughs> you got that one wrong. It's, why were you thinking that? Uh, anything like that, okay? It's the purpose. Uh, well, we got, we got a reminder, all right? There's a lot of people that know a lot about the birth of Jesus. I mean, that, that's a, a very popular topic. Uh, we sing songs about the birth of Jesus. Uh, we, we uh, you know, heard Charlie Brown and his crew read the, the story of, uh, of, of the birth of Jesus uh, every year for, for a long time. And uh, there are some things that are made up. I mean, just something as simple as the, uh, as the wise men. Um, you know, I hate to give away some of the answers, but no, we don't know. I mean, we know there's at least two, because uh, it did say men. Um, but um, man has filled in the blanks so much as that we, we know there were three of them, and we also know what their names were, <laughs> and, and probably some of their stories. And, and if you uh, Google the, the, you know, to see what they look like, then you know, they're all really nice tall guys uh, with, with even taller hats. Again, all of that's uh, made up because well, we, don't, we don't know all of that. We know the important thing. Uh, Jesus was born and he fulfilled all the prophecies uh, that uh, he was supposed to fulfill in his birth. And, of course, all the way to his death and resurrection and, and more to come. 
But if we can be uh, misinformed about something like that, a story that, that we all know and, and many of the world knows, that should be a reminder that we can also be misled about uh, other topics that maybe we don't know as much about. And so this reminder and an encouragement with questions like this, we don't need to count on somebody else to give us information when we have the facts in front of us. Uh, we have the, the scripture. So we don't, we don't have to guess at things. Uh, we either know it or we don't. Uh, we don't need to fill in the blanks with things and say, this is how it was. Um, so instead of looking at all of these examples of things that people think they knew uh, about the birth of Jesus, let's look at the, some of the things that um, we do know. Uh, we'll look at some of the facts that uh, are in the scriptures and uh, maybe look at uh, things we may have overlooked when it comes to uh, what we do know. We talked about uh, one uh, of these, uh, this one here, peace on earth. We talked about this on Wednesday night and uh, what it means because, well, actually, you know, we do find out uh, in Luke chapter 2 that uh, peace on earth is mentioned, Right. Uh, Luke 2 verse 13 and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and so again you got the shepherds out there you you, you know they are all of a sudden uh, you know they, they've got a visitor and then they've got visitors and uh, so with this angel then uh, they have this heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he's pleased and that's one way of reading it, again, depending on what translation that you have here, uh, we have the King James Version and New King James Version, uh, probably the more familiar if we're just trying to go off of what's in our mind. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And so, again, a, a lot of people read this and say, okay, here we go. Jesus has come to bring peace on earth. The Bible says it. Again, most of the other translations that we look at, it's peace on earth uh, to those with whom he's pleased or something like that. Again, there's uh, peace on earth, but, and not just a blanket statement of, okay, Jesus is here. Everybody's going to get along. Every, this is going to be great. This is going to be the most wonderful time ever, and it's, it's, and it's just going to last because uh, the, the prince of peace is here. So I, you, you probably can't read all that. I can't because it's on my screen. I can get really close. But uh, I went to Bible Hub, uh, and, and there's a lot of different translations available there. Um, and again, over and over and over and over and over and over again, translated, uh, you know, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Uh, uh, peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Um, again, Peace among men with whom he's pleased. Peace uh, on earth to the people who enjoy his favor. There is uh, something that goes along with his peace. To be able to get it, God needs to be pleased with us. Well, if we just knew how to please God and what he wanted, and of course, he has given us instructions exactly on how to be pleasing to him. So what we talked about on Wednesday night, Matthew chapter 10, verse number 34, do not think that I have come to bring peace to earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Again, that doesn't sound like um, happy, happy, joy, joy, peace on earth, and uh, everybody's going to just get along because Jesus has showed up. That is not what he was talking about, even though that is, unfortunately, what some people picture in their mind when they read that verse. And then the disappointment when they take their eyes off the verse and just look up. Maybe look online. Maybe, you know, 
if there's uh, newspapers around that they read them, uh, you, know, you know, there's not peace on earth right now. Except for those who are pleasing to God. Philippians 4, verse number 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And again, we, we think about, oh, it's one of, one of my favorite feelings in the world to remember uh, coming out of the water of baptism and knowing that my sins were washed away. And then that horrible feeling when I knew that I had sin back in my life. But again, that really, really good feeling when I knew they had been taken away again. The comparison of being able to lay my head down at night, hoping that I made it to the next day because I wasn't ready, versus being able to lay my head down, and even if something happened to me, and I couldn't do anything about it because I was sleeping right through my own death. I would be okay. That is peace. We need to make sure, again, this is a reminder that we have, it's the Bible's definition of what peace means and not what the world says not what that uh, 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 nice uh, young man Webster uh, puts in his dictionary uh, and, and what that definition says. It is what God says it is. And God explains it very well over and over again. And we can have peace because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. So we look again at the, at the birth of Jesus and we look at his name. And uh, of course... Uh, uh, Steve was nice enough to read a bunch of names that he was going to be called. Uh, but we're going to look at a couple of uh, the names that we see in, uh, in Matthew. Matthew chapter 1, uh, looking at verse number 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. So we get a couple of uh, names here that uh, that we look at. And, you know, we know there's a, a significance a lot of times, especially when, when God is giving a name. There's usually a reason for that, and so we see with uh, you know, again this prophecy, uh, Emmanuel. God with us, and uh, we talked about it some in, in class this morning in, in John chapter 1, God was with us physically here on earth, uh, again, Jesus, and uh, you know they, he was there in the beginning, and uh, he was there with God, and, and he is God, and so here he is with us uh, on earth, and so uh, then Jesus, again, uh, Jehovah is salvation, is uh you know, the meaning behind that one, or just the word Savior. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, the name Joshua, that is, uh, again, the same meaning as uh, the word, as the name Jesus. And so, again, this idea of, uh, you know, instead of, uh, you know, saying uh, Jesus, you know, we could, we could say uh, Savior, and it means the same thing. Uh, Jehovah is salvation. And over and over again, uh, hey, guess what name Jesus is called in the scriptures, especially in the New Testament? Savior. Well, that's just uh, another way of saying his name. And so when we look at uh, 
verses throughout the Old Testament. You know, we've, we've got Psalm 14, verse 7 here. When the Old Testament writers are talking about this, this need for salvation, well, there, there's a need for Jesus. And that, that's what they're saying. And, of course, that, that was God's plan all along, that he was going to provide salvation. He provided his son, John 3, 16. Uh, oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice. Israel shall be glad. Again, that's just, there's the name of Jesus. So as we read through the scriptures and we see this term salvation or, or savior, that, that's pointing us back to our Lord. All right, so what about uh, you know, that uh, little town of Bethlehem? Uh, and, and as we read through again, of course, where, where Jesus was born, well, that was a uh, prophecy fulfilled, uh, Micah 5 and, and verse number 1. Uh, now muster your troops, O daughter of troops. Siege is laid against us with a rod. They strike the judge of Israel on the cheek. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, uh, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall uh, give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock, and the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. So again, a ruler, uh, yeah, this was, uh, you know, hundreds of years before Jesus was even born, and here is a prophecy, you, you, there's going to be a ruler that is coming out of uh, Bethlehem course being the city of, of David but this happens after David there's another ruler coming and uh, of course we know that is Jesus you know king of kings lord of horse not just uh, a ruler the ruler is coming from Bethlehem and again he, just like us and you know, we've got uh, towns with the uh, with the same name you can go all over the world and find an Athens uh, I was looking on the map and uh, uh, Jeremy's going out to Texas this summer uh, for an internship and uh, near where he's going to be and uh, talk about a Texas sounding name, a Mesquite uh, is uh, going out there but to just down the road from Mesquite, Texas is Commerce. I don't think 441 goes through there but I, I, I'm going to check again just to be sure but um, you know, there, there's the same names all over, well Bethlehem was the same way, there's, there was more than one in Bethlehem but there was not one uh, named Bethlehem Ephrathah. Uh, that was very specific, the city of David, of course, uh, Bethlehem, meaning the house of bread. Uh, the, the Beth part is house. Uh, like you have Bethel, or Bethel, uh, Beth, house of God, uh, E-L from Elohim. Uh, now, I, I would not encourage you to, uh, as you come upon your friend named Beth, and say, what's up, house? Uh, she might take offense to that. But that's the, when we read this Beth part in these names of these cities, that's, uh, we know that that's house of something. And so um, we look at uh, John chapter 6, again with Jesus being born in Bethlehem. Well, amazingly enough, coming from the house of bread, he says, I'm the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So again, what a, uh, what a connection there uh, with uh, Jesus being born uh, in the house of bread. And here he is, the bread of life. And uh, again, his sacrifice that he gave, uh, his life. And then, of course, we remember that sacrifice by uh, remembering his body on the cross by eating the bread every first day of the week. And also the words that he spoke were life-giving words, just like we eat. Uh, if we don't eat, we die. And so if we don't take in his words, we die. So, again, what a, what a connection with just a, uh, with just a town that we have with Jesus. And of course his uh, clothing when he was uh, when he was born, you have swaddling cloths there and, and uh, of course he was uh, put in a manger. 
Uh, Luke chapter 2 and uh, uh, verse number 7, uh, we have uh, Mary wrapping him in these uh, swaddling clothes. You may have a swaddling cloths. Uh, and just a uh, uh, side note, uh, she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, uh, and uh, laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. I wonder why the Holy Spirit would have Luke write to her firstborn son um, and, and not include something like um, only begotten son or the fact that you know, he may have been the only son. Well, that's because, of course, we know later on we read about uh, Jesus' brothers and sisters and the fact that she had more children contrary to, to those who uh, claim her perpetual virginity. But uh, again, here we have uh, her wrapping, wrapping him up. Uh, just, uh, you know, that's, again, that's just what kids wear, right, uh, when they're born. Uh, but we see in uh, verse number 8, in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. So, again, this is uh, something that they were going to be looking for. Of course, uh, being wrapped, uh, you know, being swaddled. If they went to town and said, listen, we're looking for babies that are swaddled. Okay, bring them all out. <laughs> because that's uh, just normal. I mean, we do that today. Uh, I, Missy is the uh, uh, master swaddler. Um, I, I tried and tried and, and got to try again with grandkids uh, to, to swaddle and make the little baby burrito. And I just, I, and legs and all kind of arms and things always just pop out. Um, and for some reason, I, I think she glues it down because once she wraps them in there tight, they're, they're good and, until you know she's ready for them to come out. So it's something that just wrapping up a baby. Uh, well, that's, that's normal. So if they're just looking for that, well, that's, uh, that, that, that's kind of normal. Um, but we look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, and let's look at a comparison between, okay, swaddling a child. I mean, that, that's uh, wrapping up a baby and hold it and, and all that. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 16 says, Again, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abomination, and say, Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, your origin, your birth are, on the, are of the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite, your mother a Hittite. And as for your birth, on the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to cleanse you, nor rubbed with salt, nor wrapped in swaddling cloths. No eye pitied you to do any of these things to you out of compassion for you, for you were cast out on the open field, for you were abhorred on the day that you were born. So here again, talking about Jerusalem and how bad things were, and said, listen, th this is how much you're not taken care of. This is how much that, uh, you know, th that you're not loved. It's like you were born, and th they didn't even wrap you up. And, and, you know, because that's what normal moms do. They'll wrap them up and hold them. Compared to, listen, you're going you're gonna to find Jesus. He has been, uh, he's been wrapped up. He's been taken care of. And, of course, then the part of in a manger, uh, which is... Uh, basically a, a feeding trough so it could be cut out of, of stone out of wood uh, normally of course we see the uh, the, the wood uh, basket with the legs and hay all coming out of it and and things like that okay that uh, being in a feeding trough all right so uh, again uh, a baby wrapped up in, in swaddling cloths that's pretty normal but the crib uh, or the bassinet is a feeding trough that would narrow down the field so when you're looking for this child that we're telling you about this is what you're looking for all right that's that's you know that's something of course uh, and so we got the note there without even knowing it they were looking for a lamb and a feeding trough because that's of course the lamb of god that that was born to them and again i uh, one of these one of these things that gets added into the stories and uh, of course you know there's no room in the end so they get they get kicked out to a barn and so they've got all these animals uh, all around them and they've again this 
uh, putting them in the trough and hay all over the place. And so they, they come in there and, and I'm sure what a lovely smell for a nursery at that first night that Jesus was born and all. How big was the barn that he was born in? Oh wait, we don't actually read that he was born in a barn. We don't really know. Now there's some people that are absolutely adamant he was born in a barn. There's some people absolutely adamant. No, 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 he was just born in a in a guest house and 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 so they, they didn't have any baby furniture. So they, they brought in this thing and, and so they, they give this whole description of where he was born. We don't know. And again, the danger of filling in the blanks with this is what really happened when we don't have scripture on what really happened is we lose some credibility. As we are trying to have a discussion and we are, we are by the book people, uh, where the Bible speaks, we speak, where the Bible is silent, we're silent, except for the story of Jesus and we're going to make these things up. It's not how we need to be. Jesus was born. He was wrapped in swaddling cloths. They laid him in a manger. <clears throat> and that's about where the embellishment ends because, well, it's not really embellishing. We're reading the facts. But again, here is uh, the Lamb of God. And of course, we see that in John 1, verse 29. Uh, the next day, uh, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's pretty cool. John even knew Jesus' job description. And, and he wasn't even there when, when, uh, when they got it for him. Matthew 1, 21, he was coming to save his people from their sins. That's exactly what John said. Hey, I, I know what he's here for. Again, calling him the Lamb of God. And I just... He knew who the Messiah was going to be based on his conversations before he had been told who to look for. I just wonder if he knew, even speaking of the Lamb of God, and what we know in the Old Testament what lambs were used for. Jesus was going to be a sacrificial lamb so that he could take away the sin of the world. I wonder if John grasped that concept even as he called out his name and his description. Revelation 13 and verse 5 again calling out the lamb here and the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blasphemy in his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Also it was allowed to make war on the saints and conquer them, and authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation, and all who dwell on the earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. And of course that's where we want our name in the Lamb's Book of Life when it comes to Judgment Day. So just, again, taking a very small look at a story we all know very well. But we see the plan was made before time began. It followed God's plan perfectly. Again, God even saying, here's how you know that this is the one that we're looking for, or this is the one that you're looking for. This is, this is how you know this is a Messiah. This is how you know this is the one I've sent to be able to save the world. Prophecy after prophecy after prophecy, hundreds in the Old Testament fulfilled completely. His uh, fingerprints were all over everything that was dealing with the birth of Jesus, and of course even beyond. This was all a part of God's foreknowledge, his plan, and his obvious love for us. What you see in Galatians chapter 4, uh, verse number 4, when the fullness of time had come. So God has said, this is going to be the exact right time for this to happen. And it did. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Again, you know, Paul reminded us here, Going back to Genesis, back to, back to the first uh, uh, prophecy that uh, this, uh, you know, the seed of woman was going to bruise the devil's head. 
Amazingly enough, Jesus was seed of woman, or as the way Paul describes it here, born of woman. God spent a, but you know, I'd say spent a lot of time, but He's eternal, so He He worked at developing this plan and implementing it perfectly. And it was all because of us. It was all because of His love for us, and it was at the uh, fullness of time. It was at the right time. Thankfully, He didn't wait until we were ready. Thankfully, he didn't wait until we deserved uh, this show of his love for us. We'd still be waiting since we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Thankfully, this sacrifice was made uh, just as we were, distant from him, but he did it so he could bring us near to him. And again, today, we have an opportunity to take advantage of the sacrifice that Jesus made and to be able to be free from sin, to be able to enter into a relationship with God, our Father, uh, to, to be able to have uh, you know, all spiritual blessings that we, we talked about again this morning in class because those are in Christ and obeying the gospel puts us in Christ. But we don't have to wait until we're perfect we don't have to wait until we know everything. Uh, God will take us just as we are, as long as we are willing to be obedient to him. And so we're going to sing this song this morning as an encouragement to each other to remember that, that God is looking for us. He is uh, waiting with open arms for us, just as we are, so that he can make us so much better. Again, it, it, it starts off with our, our faith and developing that faith. Of course, uh, the Hebrew writer talks about this idea of, uh, of our faith and the fact that, that we need it in order to be pleasing to God. In Hebrews 11, verse 6. And, and then uh, there, there's a change that must come with our desire to follow after Jesus. We can't just follow, and it's our rules, it's his rules. Luke 13, 3 says it's, it's repent or perish. Matthew 10, 32 reminds us that if we don't, uh, you know, if we'll confess uh, Jesus before men, he'll confess us before God in heaven. But the very next verse reminds us that if we deny him before men, he will deny us before God. And then having our sins washed away, Acts 22, 16, just like the Apostle Paul, when he obeyed the gospel. And that is how we get into Christ. Galatians 3, 26 and 27, and, and, and Romans 6, verse 3 where we have access to those spiritual blessings, including, again, that relationship with God, the ability to be able to talk to him whenever we want. He has an open ear, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But maybe we've uh, done that and have fallen away, have moved away because we've allowed sin to enter into our life. We've made decisions that went against his will. Of course, he is waiting with open arms for us to return to him. Uh, it takes a conversation with him asking him for forgiveness. It takes our willingness to, again, repent and turn back to his will. And if there's something that we can do to encourage you to do that, uh, to be able to uh, answer questions you may have about obeying the gospel or be able to, to, to come back to him, we'd, we'd love to be able to do that and give a, a Bible answer to your question. Uh, but if, there, again, there's something this morning we'd love to help, even now as we stand and sing. Just as I
appreciate that lesson very much. Uh, a lot of good information for us to just be reminded of. We need to spend time in the Word and know what the Word says. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. <laughs> that word kind of floats around a lot lately. So. <clears throat> but um, we can know what the truth is. This time, uh, Dean's going to come and lead us in our closing prayer. I uh, also encourage everybody to stay and uh, participate in uh, fellowship together as we continue in fellowship and as we break bread together. And uh, Dean's going to, uh, as part of our prayer, to give thanks for the food we're about to partake of. Let's pray together. Let us pray. Lord, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day in which we were able to gather and to be able to study your word, to hear a lesson from Gary. And we are thankful for those able bodied people who are able to do the things that we need to do here on your day, the Lord's day. And we are thankful for everything you give us on this day. We know that we should be here and we are thankful for that. And we know that we should be able to do those things which are according to your will in the light of your word. That we know that as individuals we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And we pray for those who are not here because of sickness and illness. And we pray that they will regain their health and be able to be back among our number. But we especially pray for those who forsake the assembly because they choose not to be here not because of sickness or illness, but because they want to do other things than to be here. And we know there is no greater purpose than to serve you. And we know that you have set aside this day in which we can do that. We can worship you and love you, and we know that we can do the things that you would have us to do. We are thankful for the fellowship we have with each other here and with you and your Son. And we know the Scriptures teach where there is two or more gathered together in his name that you are there among us. And we pray that you'll help us to realize the needs of this community and wherever we may go in teaching your gospel. And we are thankful for Gary's niece who has become a Christian. And we pray that there will be much encouragement given to her and much strength. And we pray that you'll help us to be the examples we need to be to find those in this area with good and honest souls who would be willing to hear your word. And we pray that you'll bring them to us through your providential care that we may be able to teach them. And we pray that a desire within our heart to know the truth, and there's no greater truth than your Son is our Savior. And we pray that you'll help us to realize each and every day that it's up to us to find those around us. That there are many who are lost around us as we once were before we became Christians. And without the effort of others, we may have never had that opportunity. We need to put forth that effort. Please bless us as we have those who have, are recovering from sickness and illness, that they are back among our number, that you'll bless those who may have ongoing ailments, which many of us do, that we may be able to have the strength to know that someday these ailments will be gone. Someday we'll be of a spiritual nature completely and there'll be no body in which we can break down or cause us pain and anguish. And we thank you for allowing us to know that heaven awaits us if we remain faithful to thee. We have those who have prepared food for us and we are thankful for those who were willing to do so. And we pray that you'll bless us as we partake of this food and you'll help us to realize the nourishment you give us with this food, but also the spiritual nourishment that we can only get from your Son. In Jesus' name, amen.